In this video, let us look at what is Pearman's rank correlation uh, because we know the limitations of Pearson correlation coefficient. So, we see that um, Pearson correlation coefficient is not sensitive to nonlinear relationships. Also, um, for this kind of uh, data, we can use other coefficient coefficients like Spearman's or Kendall rank. Let us look at Spearman's in this course. I am not going to discuss Kendall's rank because there will be too much of talking about correlation only in this course. But let us have a, a feel of what is Spearman's rank correlation. Similar to Pearson's correlation coefficient, uh, Spearman's rank correlation also varies between plus minus 2 minus 1 and uh, exactly it is a negative sign indicates there is an indirect uh, uh, relationship between x and y that is indirectly proportional. If x increases, y will decrease. Um, if, uh, if x increases, uh, then y will decrease that is negative sign and the positive sign indicates if if x increases, then y also will increase, so direct, directly proportional. And the values indicates uh, the magnitude of relationship between x and y. Uh, if uh, value is more like 0.8 or 0.9 is strongly correlated, 0.2 indicates the correlation is a bit weak. Okay. The first point of Pearson correlation coefficient between ranks is called uh, Spearman's rank correlation. Spearman's rank correlation is nothing but uh, Pearson coefficient coefficient applied on ranks on the variables we use. So, we will discuss that in detail okay, in the coming slides. So, let us look at that. Um, so, rank of variables then do a Pearson's or is exactly what Spearman's row is. Let us look at seven students data and we have attendance um, and we have final marks out of this. Now, uh, first thing we have to do is let us take the this is x, consider this is x and this is the y. Okay. Uh, we will do the ranking of the available data like um, this is the least and uh, uh, maybe arrange it in ascending order um, and uh, this is the first rank, this is second rank, uh, first is 45, second is 56, then uh, 80, uh, then uh, 85, 90. Uh, 95, 100, uh, those are ranks. Similarly, for the max, uh, we can uh, rank, this is the least value they I rank, so 1, and next is 2, and uh, this is th 3, and uh, 4, uh, 5, there are 2, um, 90, so 6 and 7 we do not want to give, so we can put 6.5, 6.5, okay. Uh, so, since we have a rank them, this variables are ranked, if you compute Pearson's R on this rank, that gives you the Spearman's row. Uh, Spearman's row is, uh, this is a row, the symbol is Spearman's row. Um, since I use a different font, it is like that, otherwise it is just a row. There is no line below it, it is just a row. Spearman's row and uh, is computed on the ranks of the, uh, Pearson computed on the ranks on the variables. Okay, so it is simple. Mm, there is other formula instead of uh, using um, Pearson on this rank, the other formula is very easy. You compute the difference between these two uh, ranks. So, the difference between these two ranks is 0, 0 and this is 1.5, um, it is 2.5, okay, I am wrong, okay, then the calculation will be wrong, hmm. okay. Okay, so let us compute it again later or uh, you can compute it on yourself. So, the difference is 2.5 and it is 2 and it is 2 and this is 0.5 and this is 2. So, the values will be if you, um, I just did the, the mode because I just, uh, if it is negative also I consider it is positive because I just want the absolute difference not the uh, sign. For example, 2, uh, 2 minus 2 0, 4 minus 2 will be minus 0.2.5 but I just put 2.5 as the value and uh, 3 will be minus and will be positive. Um, does not matter, you know, if you want to you consider the, the square of this value. So, whenever it is minus, it will be positive in the anyway. So, 0, um, 0, 0, 2.25, 4, 4, uh, 0.25 and 4. So, you can use this value, the summation of um, this d square values and uh, there is a formula to compute uh, Spearman's row, it is actually the 1 minus 
um, the 6 into summation of d square values uh, n into n square minus 1 n is actually number of samples is 7 here and um, we can use this formula to compute uh, square man's rule and um, this formula is a simplified uh, formula of um, uh, doing Pearson's or under rank. So this is how uh, you compute uh, Spearman's group. So let's look at um, the plot. The plot looks like this for this variable. Um, that's a linear relationship, you know. That's a good relationship from year to year. Let's look at the Spearman's group value and uh, uh, R value. Um, the row is 0 0.74. Um, The row is 0.74, this is not correct uh, because I used uh, 1.5 instead of 2.5. If you uh, compute it, uh, if you compute this value correctly, 2.5 square, and you add that, uh, sum up it up, and if you add it and compute in this particular formula, you might get a different value. If you use uh, the difference in ranks and compute this and compute the square mass row using this particular formula, you will get this result. If you simply apply um, uh, Pearson's or on this rank, you will get this value. This value I took it from the uh, website. Uh, that's a website which will help you to compute Spearman's for free. So I used this data applied there, I got this value. So this value is not correct. Um, you can compute it and compare. There's a small difference between the values you compute uh, by applying this formula or applying a Pearson's or on this rank. So uh, I would uh, request uh, you to check what is Spearman's row in detail, uh, but this is how the Spearman's row is computed. When we mean uh, Spearman's row is computed by using rank, the variables then apply Pearson's or on the rank. This is what it means. You rank them, then you apply Pearson or on that. So here, R indicates. Um, Pearson's correlation coefficient 0.84 is high correlation, but Spearman is not saying it's high correlated because uh, the relationship may not be linear or uh, something is uh, missing. So let's see what is the exact difference uh, between a row and R in an SLI. In this activity, um, I just want you to show uh, how uh, Spearman's row um, is sensitive to the outliers. Okay. So now we saw this particular um, values in the previous slides. I changed two values that is for a marks A I changed this to 17 and for the high marks in A I changed this 23. So I made a two outliers out of this marks. I just changed myself to create two outliers because every other value is perfectly high score means high score in B, high score in A, high score equal to B. So but I just changed these two values to show the outliers. Now can you uh, predict, do not need to compute it uh, mathematically, can you predict or guess what will be the Spearman's row for this plot? Also what will be the um, R value like Pearson's correlation coefficient value of this plot and how it will differ? Can you uh, guess it and uh, how it will vary for the outliers and everything? If you have done that, um, please watch the video to continue. So the Spearman's row for that particular um, is 0.81, but the um, but correlation coefficient R is 0.34. Because it's outlier, the line tries to fit all the lines, and there's a huge difference between uh, the points and the line. So the uh, R value is going low, but rho is good. Rho is not sensitive to that outlier. Okay, so it can handle the outliers also. The rank value is used to compute the correlation. Uh, why Spearman's law is not that much sensitive? Because out of all 60 students' data, only two data is not correct. For example, uh, in that example 94 and 98, right? So this will be highly ranked 59 and 60. Uh, and the why the marks are uh, 17 and 23, I hope from wrong, just minute I check it out, it is 17 and 23, yep. So this might have, um, so this might have been a rank number 1 and rank number 2. 
So, when you compute the difference between ranks, so it might be say 58 and 58 and square of these values might be huge, uh, but when compared to the other values, there are other 58 values which is closely related, you know, it is like highly related. Uh, I leave like all the ranks might be equal except these two ranks, so one or two values. So, there is a value and if you divide by 60 into 60 square um, minus 1, this value will be negligible. So, that Spearman's row is not much sensitive to the outliers like the um, Pearson correlation coefficient will do. The reason is we are ranking them, we are comparing on the rank, only the two values are not matched. So, we try to compute the correlation coefficient as much as good based on how many numbers or uh, how many values are highly correlated and it can ignore the outliers. So, hope you understand the relationship between uh, how uh, Spearman's row is uh, computing the correlation in outliers. Also, the uh, Pearson's correlation uh, coefficient is computing concern the outliers when they compute the R value. Let us do the other activity just make it clear. Huh? Um, you see x value in this plot is 1, 3, 4, 6, 7 or some uh, scale between 1 to 10, but the y value is 1, 10, 100, 1000, 2000 like in the uh, log scale or something. If it is 10,000 that means in the logarithmic scale. And uh, if I want to compute uh, Spearman's rank correlation row and also um, or Pearson's correlation coefficient, what will be the values? No need to do uh, computations, mathematical computations, instead uh, based on your understanding till now, try to uh, find out the uh, correlation coefficient between these two variables. Uh, maybe the, uh, the linear relationship will now connect some lines like this and uh, that might have some different points and uh, experiments will do differently. Uh, can you guess the row and R value after doing that? Please rush him to continue. The R is, um, I'm sorry, um, the R value is 0.87 positive and it indicates it is highly correlated but some points are um, not uh, linearly related with x and y. If x increases, y also increases, but not uh, fitting in that linear uh, relationship, the linear line. But rho indicates 1, it means for all the incremental in the x, y also increases. They may not be in the linear, um, linear scale of in increment, but there is an increment in x, that is y is incremental. So, 1 indicates whenever the x increases, y also increases, maybe the different uh, uh, scale, but that is a relationship that is why rho is 1. So, this indicates rho can handle uh, if one variable uh, uh, in a different scale, a logarithmic scale and x in other scale, it can even able to identify the correlation coefficient, because we add a rank. Uh, you understand right. So, uh, if you compute the rank of the values in the previous plot, you get exactly the similar rank. So, all the ranks are same, if you find a difference it will be 0. So, you get 1 minus 0, it will be 1, that is how the row is computed. Uh, but the patient's correlation coefficient will try to indicate 0.87. So, I just uh, want to show that uh, in the previous slide. Um, If you just compute the rank, uh, the x rank will be uh, rank of x will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, rank of y will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, if you kind the difference between these two values, uh, definitely it is 0 and 1 minus 0 by whatever value it will be uh, 0, so 1 minus 0 is 0. Or if you compute a Pearson's R on this value, it is kind of a self correlation, it will be definitely 1. So, that is why the uh, Spearman's row is 1, but uh, um, the R value is not 1, R value is trying to fit a line, maybe the line kind of trying to fit like this. There is a small difference between these lines, values in these lines, that is why it is 0.81. Hope you understand uh, what is Spearman's row and uh, correlation coefficient, uh, Pearson's correlation coefficient are. 
So, which one to choose is very, very important and can I just go and use coefficient as the uh, values to prove my algorithm or hypothesis or my inferences? I would like to say it is not the case. So, first always visualize your data as we show the figure uh, diagnostic analysis means you should have done the descriptive analytics also. Visualize the data and see is there any outlier, what are the relationship between x and y, is x and y in the same scale or linearity all these things. Then you can choose which correlation coefficient you want to report. Most widely um, Pearson's correlation coefficient is used if it is values or both are uh, nominal uh, it is good. If uh, one of the values ordinal people use Pearman's row. So, look at your data visualize since you know uh, the math began both these correlations Pearman's and uh, Pearson, now you know which one to choose based on your data. So, visualize it and decide and also consider non-linear relationship between these data then pick the right uh, correlation coefficient. If you are doing it show it why you are picking the right correlation coefficient uh, explain to others and uh, use that value. Most important is correlation it is not causation. Correlation indicates just what is the relationship between x and y. If yes increases is y also increasing or decreasing that is what the correlation is indicating. Never use correlation as a causation. It never tells that y increases because of s increases. No, there is a correlation between these two variables, but it never tells causation of y, y is increasing. So, never use the correlation coefficient values to prove your causation in your theory. Okay? So, in this video we saw what is Spearman's row and uh, we also saw uh, what is uh, relationship between Spearman's row and Pearson's correlation coefficient. Hope you understood both. Thank you.